everybody, and welcome to tonight's newest indoor adventure in the wild beyond the witchlight, part 26, Smotherhorn. It's been weird. I don't know why my brain just stopped working halfway through that. Today is August 21st, 2022, and you are loved. That is a very important thing that we like to remind each and every single one of our viewers and listeners at the beginning of each and every single one of these games. If this is your first time joining us, you can go to youtube.com slash indoor adventures to check up on all of the VODs of each of the games that we have played up until this point, or you can go towards where anywhere audio casts are being made available for free. You can find us there under the same moniker. And speaking of things that are being made available for free, if you go to patreon.com slash indoor adventures, you can check up on our after show called Nights in the Courtyard. The after show that we like to do for all you acorns out there, we just... I don't know why. It's a hard time. Maybe it's because this it. is like the you first... This is the first cup of coffee I've had all day, so Brain is like really trying to kickstart on its own way. But let's say that you already support us on Patreon. You already support us on YouTube and Twitch and all of those other wonderful places, and you're trying to think to yourself, where can I go to help support this fantastic show even more? Guess what, buddy? I got your back. Quite literally, in fact, because if you go to indooradventure.redbubble.com, we got t-shirts, we got posters, we got mugs, we got crop tops, throw pillows, shower curtains, aprons, clocks, and we also have face masks with the symbol of Tiamat upon them, designed by our very own Cyberwolf1201, where all of the proceeds of our face masks and all of our merch currently is going to help support Doctors Without Borders. So if you would like to help support a good cause, you can again go to indooradventure.redbubble.com. That is indoor adventure, no S at the end, .redbubble.com. But that is it for my opening spiel. So hey, RJ, who you playing today? Hey, everybody. I am RJ, and today I'm playing Vice, the tiefling rogue warlock. We both go by he, him. Hi y'all, uh, I am Sarah, I will be playing Miss Lowry Moon, our Hexblood Spore Druid, and we both use she, her pronouns. Howdy howdy, I am Media Flare, I'm going to be playing Balhadur Morthak, both of us use they, them. Hey everybody, I'm Wings, she, her, I'm going to be playing as Clout Impkin, the tiefling bard, he, him. And I'm the indoor adventurer, he, him, and tonight I shall be your dungeon master. So, last we left off. Your group decided that it was about time you took care of those pesky Briganox because they had clearly allied themselves with Creeping Lynn, aka Bitter End, aka Endolin Moongrave. At that point, you went in to kind of throw down with these Briganox to find that they were mouse sized and that they couldn't really do a whole lot of damage to you when they were too busy looking so cute with their physical with a physical uh representation of their soul being on the outside of their body and speaking with Molliver, an individual uh who was a member of valor's call uh still possibly a member of valor's call it's been a while since they left the cave they were able to at least inform you that the Briganox were in no way associated with Creeping Lynn, and it was actually the Korids that you had been, you know, helping to remove the Briganox because they believe it was just a huge misunderstanding. You were able to get that taken care of. You saved a young goblin girl uh, from the trials of a mean kite. Uh, Feywild's crazy. Uh, but thankfully, you were able to get all that done. You were able to get a nice, good sleep in, and then you made your way across a chasm. A chasm that at its base was filled with gems made from bad wishes uh, that housed three flaming skulls. Vice, you managed to rush across the bridge rather quickly, not without suffering a blast from one of these flaming skulls. However, uh, you were all able to speak to Obad. Uh, this very, very old Briganok who lives on top of a, or who lives in a house built on top of a pony, that pony's name being Keg, uh, where you were then able to make your way into the workshop of Motherhorn, this kind of like below the stage area where the Briganox had secreted a tunnel into. And when you arrived, uh, you had heard that there was, uh, a voice saying Psst, over here you eventually found the source of the voice and it was a small puppet 
painted up like a skeleton that had wrapped themselves in their own marionette strings. Thankfully, you managed to undo the marionette strings from this little skeleton puppet. The skeleton puppet then introduced themselves as Break a Leg, uh, and they thanked you for freeing them. And that is where we last left off, was you having successfully free to break a leg, uh, and they are currently holding on to, like, their marionette piece, and it looks like they're, like, busy kind of wrapping, uh, like, kind of rolling their loose strings around the marionette bit, so that way they don't get, uh, caught in their own strings again. Uh, and, uh, Break a leg is, again, very thankful of you four that have arrived through this tunnel. Just, wow, I couldn't have really, I couldn't have done this without you. Uh, uh, by the way, the name's Break a Leg, and he goes over and he takes, uh, he like, uh, like reaches up with a hand, and Vice, you extend your hand down, and he just grabs one of your fingers with two of his little puppety hands and shakes it. And then he goes over to you, Lowry, and he uh, offers to shake your hand as well, clout your hand as well, and Balhadur uh, your hand as well, as he gives you all a, a, a round of thanks. Uh, and then says, um, Now, you're probably wondering what I'm doing here when all the good action's getting up over there. Well... As it turns out, we little marionettes are supposed to have a mean streak a mile wide. I was built missing one. So, I got tossed in here and I've been kind of like rolling around trying to get out of my own, you know, strings for a while. And it's a little difficult because like I don't have like, like you all have like the big appendages. You got five on them at the end of each one of you, even bigger appendages. But I only got like the solo one, it's not a lot of articulation, so thank you. Right. Marionettes are supposed to be mean. Well, the ones that, the ones that Endelin built are supposed to be mean. Oh. Yeah, she had uh, an example. Uh, would be, you know, like one of the one of the other first ones that was built. She made us a gift back when her and her sisters were on uh, better terms. Her name was Pincushion that she gave to Scabitha. Uh, and then, oh, she's so super mean. Really rude. Don't we know her? Uh, I, I, we I do. Oh, yeah. Mm hmm. She's mellowed out. Oh, mm -hmm. well, good for her, you know, like, I always hoped that she would, and it really seemed like it was more of, like, a peer pressure thing. Like, everyone was being mean to me, and she didn't used to be, but then when she saw that everyone else was being mean to me, she sort of, like, hopped on as, like, a survival tactic. Yeah, huh. Yeah! Um, puppets can be cruel. Uh, excuse me, I, I just need to get past you. Real quick. Yeah, okay, uh, you can either step over me or step around. Either way is fine. I'll just be uh, right over here. You know, I'll be out it, of the way. Hold on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Uh, <laughs> scoot past him. Uh, Clout's gonna look at that moon mask that was mentioned last session. Well, uh, thankfully it is not a moon mask. It is a circular wooden disc, eight feet in diameter, painted to look like eight. a moon. Fucking feet. Yes, and when you lift, and when you go <laughs> to lift more. this potential mask, you know, again, Cloud's not the brightest crayon in the shed here. I heard a, <laughs> I heard a moon disc, and I was like, that sounds great. Yeah, a, a disc. <laughs> uh, it weighs about fifty pounds, Clout. Huh. He's gonna. He's just gonna have a have a look, see at it. Um, sort of walk around it a little bit. Yeah, uh, I would say that looking at it. Uh, it is a, uh, this wooden disc is painted to look like a moon. It weighs about 50 pounds and it has a small iron ring screwed into the top so that it can be hung from behind, uh, so that way, uh, it can be hung and hooked on stage. Um, it's, it's a prop. Yeah. Yeah, and, uh, Gleam actually recognizes, uh, the prop and gleam uh being uh a member of these acrobatic elven twins uh kind of recognizes that that was actually part of um that was part of her set initially really yeah there wouldn't happen to be a 
sun version of this somewhere, would there? Well, there might be. Knowing Endolin, she probably destroyed the sun version. She's not just going to hide it. The moon is a little more useful, not trying to toot my own horn as the side of the moon uh, in our, our twins act, but uh, it's a more common motif in a lot of plays than having a son. Hmm. Fair enough, especially in a play being hosted by Endolin. All right, well, let's just keep in mind where this is. Might be useful later. Yes. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else uh, of note in this room we are in? Uh, so you are in parts storage. Uh, if... Pamferdam was here, it would be like a veritable smorgasbord. Like, there's all sorts of, like, weird nails and screws and, and thingamajigs that you'd be able to get, uh, that he would have been able to get tiny little mitts on. Uh, but all things considered here, uh, it seems like this is, uh, primarily just a storage room, uh, for a lot of just like random bits and bobs uh there is however uh an exit way out of this room uh that is to the let me just check here that would be to the east um that you see and it has like a, a large curtain that's been placed over it and you can hear things that are happening in that room uh, but it seems like this room was really just, like, a discarded marionette that had been, like, trapped in his own web for a while. Uh, but we can hear stuff happening in the other room, Yes, said? you can hear other things happening. And you can hear what sounds like a uh, a collection of voices and then more of, like, a, a uh, commanding, haughty, uh, feminine voice coming from that room as well. Uh, Belhadur will try and get everyone's attention just real quick to just gesture at the uh, little flap and try and get everyone's attention on the noise. Yeah, sounds like people talking. Should, should we check it out? Wait. Um, Cloud, shall we? Vice walks over to, like, um, a crate or something, picks up a clipboard. <sighs> yeah, okay. What's the plan here? Well, each of you pick up a box, and we'll just walk through the area, make it look like we belong. Oh, if, um, if you just carry something and look like you know where you're going, you'd be surprised what you can get into. Well, that would be fair if it weren't for the fact that there is literally a logo for the seely coat and my armor. Any chance you could cover that with a cloak? I don't have one to spare, do you? If I look around in this room, can I find something akin to a cloak? Uh, because this is not the costuming department, this is more of where, like, the prop ma- uh, this wouldn't be where the, like, prop master would be. This is where, like, again, like, you'd find a bunch of nails. I can doff my armor, though I will be a little less combat effective if I do so. Let me check my- I about, uh, four AC worth of points. <laughs> Inventory. And, uh, Vice, at the base of your coat, you feel a slight tug, uh, and you look down, and this little, uh, skeleton-painted marionette is looking back up towards you. Um, and, uh, it just says, are you planning on going deeper into there? Sadly, my friend, yes, and, um, as... Thanks for us helping you. I request that you not say anything about our presence here. Oh, easy, easy as pie. I, j I just had like a quick, quickity, quickity split question for you. All right. Where did you come from? Where did I go? Um, 
outside of Motherhorn, if you can believe it. Well, can I didn't I see insight? you come th No, I mean, like, I didn't see you come through the big flap. Like, is there... Is there another way in this can place? I, can I insight check this marionette? Yeah! Inside <laughs> check. Marionette is marionette facial a, expressions. Is he a <laughs> intonation, body posture? His like, um, head's, like, clanking forward. And you can see that they're, more. like, holding their little marionette cross, like, really close, like it's their baby, and they're escaping some sort of persecution. <laughs> a 16 do. A 16? They're holding their little cross like it's a baby, and they want to get out of this horrible, dreadful place. He looks like a little skeletal refugee. Yeah, he's just like, <laughs> he's, you know, like he was saying, like, everyone has been mean to him ever. Aww, Listen, buddy. break a leg. We're here to retrieve some people, hopefully <gasps> a lot of people. We can't tell you where this exit is in case you're working for someone else. Well, how about this? If I am, look, I understand. <laughs> My grim visage may make you believe that I am some sort of skeleton. I am not. I have a little wooden heart that w could be if a wish spell was cast upon it. But instead, I am just a small marionette who hates living here. How about this? How about I tell you some secrets about this place? If I tell you everything, all the secrets... And then little bits that I know, will you tell me where the exit is? I just want to leave this place. If anybody finds me again, they might tear my arms off. Or worse, repurpose me. You know what it's like for a sentient puppet to get repurposed? It's not pretty. Vice pulls a face. <laughs> like, <ugh. laughs> Um, rest of the group. What did it be? Can I do an insight check? Yeah. I up oh, seven. God damn it. Seven. <laughs> I, say, I Clap. like it used to be my <laughs> job to look out for troublemakers. This guy. There's a seven. In this fucking guy. There's no. You know what? Let him tell you the secrets first. Then you see if the secrets that he told were worth his freedom. You know. I mean, honestly. The fact that you keep on trying to convince us kind of makes you seem more suspicious. Sorry to say. I just really want to get out of here. Look, okay, how about this? It's the first one's free. And and I will admit, it is one of the worst kept secrets. So if you all already know this one, then, you know, that's on, that's on me and kind of on everybody else too. But... You know, do you see that? You see that that over right there? That over there? And he's pointing toward the large wooden disc that is painted to look like the moon. Andalyn is terrified of eclipses. Oh my god. <laughs> if there's an eclipse around, when, you know, she were to meet an untimely end, she would die. Otherwise, she's just going to come back. I'm going like, to stop you, you there. Again, it's a worst-kept secret. I know, I know. It just, you, you gotta uh -huh. cover your bases. One would think if there's a simple way to get yourself killed, you'd keep the secret a lot better than that. Well, you know, like, the weird thing is, is that she writes all of these secrets out in a library. Like, she has these books, right? They're little black books. And every time she gets, she stares into her ori of tragedies, is what she calls it. She ori writes down all the tragedies in, in, like, a rhyme scheme. I don't know why it has to rhyme, but she writes them all down, and then she puts them in a library. Like, some kind of weird, grim alcove. Where you would just go in and be like, oh, what's she worried about today? And then you could check out the books. So, like, other people, like, it's an older tome that said that, like, she was scared of it. So, like, people have just been, like, commonly, like, hey, did you read the newest thing? Oh, yeah, I read that weeks ago. It said that she's afraid of moons now. Ah. Well. She's just doing this on the daily? Oh, she does it all the time. Like, if, if she is not watching... Any of the two performances that they put on every single day, she's just like looking at the Ori of tragedy. Does she ever write anything else? What, like letters and stuff? I mean, yeah, she's written a few things. One of the things that she wrote was a secret about her sister Scabitha. 
she wrote it on a piece of invisible parchment that she actually keeps in her library. It's on like the tallest shelf. If anything happens, you could find it and it'll tell you kind of a, 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 a do dirty secret about Scabatha. How's that for a fun secret? That sounds neat, unless Scabatha is not alive anymore. Oh, no. That, I mean, that, like, we can all hope, right? But, like, that's never going to happen. Vice She's gives like, him crazy the most powerful. serious face that he has ever given anyone. Oh. Oh. I see. And you all were the ones who, uh, 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 sent into the push, push pop factory? Well, not I, but they did for sure. I've got the last bits of the candy. That candy might come in useful, you know. A lot of creatures around here have a sweet tooth, not me. My teeth are made of wood. Can't eat nothing. <laughs> Every once, she has threatened to use me as a nutcracker before, and I don't really know what that means. I can see it. Uh, all it right. wouldn't be a good time. All right, okay, okay, okay. So, so you don't care about the secret to Scabatha because you're unalive, there's something good. You don't care about the other secret because, you know, it's a secret that you already, have, everyone kind of knows. But, but, but. How about this? Her giant orrery, the big contraption that she has that like allows her to see all these tragedies, all the lights and everything like that, none of that would work. Because she got lightning rods placed on top of a bunch of mountains. If you took out the lightning rods, that would take down the power in this place. And she wouldn't be <laughs> able to do nothing. Now, if I was working secretly for her, which again, Gods forbid, I would never, under a million years. She treated me terribly. Horrible. Absolutely horrible. Technically, but, we still kind of already knew that one, too. Uh, but, it's good oh, to be confirmation that that is what it does. Yep, glad to hear my theory is proven true. Right. We didn't know about the Ori, though. So, I guess, you know, net one secret. Okay, how about this? big Mr. Smart Man. You want to know what she does to all her enemies? All the most enemy. hated foes? Turns them into, into puppets? puppets. No! <laughs> she does not turn them into the likes of myself. We are a separate breed. Removes she turns... their shadows? No. Oh. She removes the shadows of the ones that she likes. Oh. Then she what is this that? punishment? The punishment is that she turns them into masks. Uh, There's a room oh. upstairs, inside. You want to know how they get all those fun masks for the plays? All the ones that have the different expressions of either happy or sad or all that? They were people once. And once you get turned into a mask, if the mask breaks, ain't no coming back from that. This is some Buffalo Bill shit. Did we break uh, the other two uh, little kids' masks? Little kids' masks? No. I don't remember Ghosts? breaking any masks. All right. I don't remember seeing any masks. But the ones that she doesn't like, the ones that she really doesn't like, she turns into masks. Any way to fix that? You got a way to dispel a magic? Remove a curse? Is that all it takes? Look, there's not a lot of people who are willing to stand up for her, and I could get repurposed just, like, bringing this up. That's kind of why I really want to leave. No, listen, listen here, Brick. Like, this is important. Is it dispelling magic or is it removing a curse? Because I can do one of those things, and I definitely can't do the other thing. Well. Also, if the hag in question expires, would any of this be unturned? Well, the magic is not... It's... I, I think it. the magic is not hag based it is hag based like it's the hag made the thing that then the thing is doing what the thing is doing to turn the people into the masks but it's not the hag directly involved like she doesn't have to like concentrate on it to keep them there so i don't think that like if you if you unalived her if you know you like you took a stage left if you know what i'm saying that then they wouldn't th revert back by that no point. you would have to do yeah. something extra 
in order to do that. So that 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 would be my guess on that one. My head hurts. I Val, I can dispel magic. So if that's the I'm case, I could go ahead. Sorry, I'm I'm assuming that Glimmer has been turned into a mask. Uh, he kind of like stops and looks at Gleam for a second, realizing that was a little bit insensitive. And... You know, just accounting for the fact that she wanted to get rid of her, that makes the most sense to me. Flies so punches Clout in the shoulder to make him stop. But my point is, if we needed to kill the witch in order to turn them back, that would be a non-starter. We need Glimmer to do that to begin with. It's a oh, dispel look. magic. I looked in my I looked in my like <laughs> mind palace. <laughs> Break the leg. Super great, man. Do you know if anyone has recently been turned into a mask? Specifically a unicorn. Oh yeah, no, I heard the I heard the rumblings of that one. There was a unicorn that got turned into a mask not too long ago. Like maybe like within the last couple of days. I don't know. I kinda just hear like shouting and and yelling. Uh, Please from don't do that. From, that would be. No, I hear it. I don't do that. I hear it coming from the oh. other room. That Shaw May lady. She's been yelling at like this little mouse size guy for like long time. Are they green? Shaw May or the mouse size guy? The mouse, the mouse size one. I don't really know. I'm sort like she yells. You're as small as a mouse, but can't you work faster? Like I've never seen it. I've literally been trapped in my own strings. For a while now. Again, the lack of thumbs and uh, uh, articulation points in, in any kind of semblance of fingers has really done me a dirty being trapped in this supply closet. That could be, um, um, I, I think their name was Golmo, right? The Briganock? Oh, yes. Yeah, that would, architect. Yeah, if, I mean, like, that's just like, Again, like, she's been yelling non-stop at that guy. Just, like, right through there. Like, makes motion <sighs> to the screen door. Save that guy, too. And she, look. I'm just spilling as many beans as I can, because, like, I really want to get out of here. And if I say everything, then hopefully, you know, you guys will... Well, one, you're giving us some very good information, and we appreciate that. Two, if we want to get the little Briganock out of here, we could do some sort of distraction to avert the lady's attention. Mm -hmm. And then someone else comes in and swoops the little bugger. If we want to cut the power to this place, they might be helpful in getting that done. Yeah. All right. Make a uh, little journey? Down. Just like break a bunch of the things? This is a certain idea. We will... Because then she'd have to send out forces to try and, like, put the lightning rods back. That would pull forces away from their palace. She'd be agitated. Maybe a probably... little... We, uh, we call it, you know, like a heel turn. We could probably get the cords to make things very difficult for them. Oh, if, you've, if you're friends with cords... They're, like, super strong. They got, like, you know, like, mm -hmm. their beards and, and nose hair and ear hair and toe hair. Like, all of that's, like, super... Oh, no, I guess they have hooves. They don't have toe hair. But they got, like, all sorts of hair that's, like, super strong. You could probably, like, wrap it around one of those things. And if you know anybody who's, like, super big and strong, they'd be able to, like, help pull. And you could just topple them, like, one after the other. It'd be, oh it'd be no problem. Oh, my God. We have all the pieces, don't we? Uh, it sounds like we I do. So. Pieces of what? The puzzle. Oh, you guys are doing puzzles? I love puzzles. Is it like a crossword? No, it's like it, the plan. Pieces oh, are the, the plan. The right. plan is like a puzzle. I gotta say, break a leg. This is a good batch of beans. <gasps> then no, you'll tell me how beans. to get out now. Vice will walk over to where they came up and he'll like lift the covering and point down it. <gasps> All of my years. And it was right here. 
I promise I'm not going to tell no one about this. Nobody, not, not one. Do I've been wishing this day would happen. The only place I have to go is not here. And that seems like a pretty good place to be. Um, Lowry will give them directions to the Briganox cave. Thank you. Th what was your name again? Uh, Lowry. Lowry? Break a leg. A pleasure to meet you. And I hope that you have a fantastic day. Thank you again so much, all of you. You've been wonderful. And he gives, like, a very courteous bow. Break a leg, break a leg. That's what they call me. And he just, like, this little wooden puppet just... <laughs> happily walks off. One down. <sighs> Vice waits approximately one minute. Someone should have told him about the flame skulls. Oh. I assumed you were sending them to their death. No. Thankfully. Uh, well, then, yes, you definitely Someone's should on the have. other side to warn them. Yeah, Luckily the old man, Koronok. Will... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Luckily you guys will Harvard. send them to Obud and Keg the Pony in that yes. chamber before they reach the rest of it. So there's no worries. It's fine. They'll just be really. trapped in a different place. Mm -hmm. We're going to have to help him out of there, I think. Probably. Yeah. Hmm. All right. So what's the plan? Um, <sighs> save the Briganok. Go get help to knock down the towers. Draw the forces out. And then... Attack. Should we scout out the building first? With everybody in it? I'm pretty sneaky. If we can either sneak or actually manage to pull off the disguise that we work here, I would be down for the idea. Otherwise, if we don't think we can pull it off, uh, leaving with the Briganok and calling that a success and doing some distractions outside would be the better idea. If you're going off sneaking, I'm going as a mouse in your pocket. Oh my god, Belhador. Yes? I can make you invisible. Ah. I forgot that I could do that for other people. Sorry, this thing is new. There well, is. That'll make it a lot easier for me to not be identified as a direct enemy of this person. There is just an incredulous look from Lowry. <laughs> Vice <laughs> walks up the cloud, and you know the like anime short girl like bops. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just wailing on cloud like why? <laughs> what? And Gleam just sort of like, like th more thinking aloud to herself, uh, comments. I wish we had one of those special cupcakes from the Witchlight. You know, oh, there was a do. contest that we would have every once in a while where Hamden. if you would win, then they would give you a, 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 a cupcake of invisibility that you could use. It was sort of like a fun thing that you, you just had to eat a lot of custard. Uh, in order to do it, we do we do have one of those actually. Our, oh. our friend left it behind. Um, I'd rather not think about the custard. Then no longer with us. The custard, the cupcake. No, the friend. Oh. Uh. Moving on. It's okay, Clout. You don't have to cry. I think I actually bit into my lip. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not crying. I'm just trying to cringe into a different reality. Um, who has the cupcake? I think you do. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep, 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 yep. <laughs> Chuck's bag. Yeah, there it is. I love this party so much. Several week old magic ma magic cupcake. <laughs> the magic right, sprinkles. Who wants the cupcake. Eight. Oh, so I'm... then that's multiple invisibilities then. Well, if you're casting invisibility on someone, wouldn't you need it then? Lee, I'd like to avoid. I can only do this once today and it'll only last for an hour how long will a cupcake last like pulls out the instructions <laughs> great okay 
So if you eat half of it, does that mean you get 30 minutes, or do you get the full hour? That you means that you would most likely get a sore tummy. You need to eat the whole thing in order for the magic to work. Or do you turn, like, opacity slider 50%? It's all or nothing, man. That's two invisibilities and a mouse. So, how do we turn the third of us invisible or have them remain hidden? I'm a sneaky bastard. That's what I do. All right, well, if you're confident in your skills, that's enough for me. Anybody here with Pass Without a Trace? Out of character? Oh, I have it. I have disadvantage on still. Well then, you can cast Pass Without a Trace and then Wild Shape, right? Uh -huh. Yeah. And that won't break concentration? Mm -mm. Excellent. Bada bing, bada boom, let's do this. All right, ghost me. Vice does not call Balhudur ever again. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible. Um, <laughs> Clout's gonna point at Balhudur and cast invisibility. Okay. All right. Then I'm. You ready? Then I'm gonna Go. eat this goddamn cupcake. Lowry's gonna cast a uh, pass without a trace. Try not to think about Pam. Fail. This is the last thing we have of him. Oh, oh. Oh. What are you talking about? Lara's gonna turn, cast Pass Without Trace and then turn into a little brown mouse. And okay. Just sit there looking up <laughs> at Vice. Perfect. This is going to look very weird for you. You'll put her in his pocket and uh, turns to everyone. Everyone blinks and Vice is gone. Mm. I rolled a... Natural 20, plus my 10, plus the 10. So it's a 40. <laughs> Jesus. Incredible. You Just appear... Okay, smoke with a vice RJ, question. Uh, with a stealth like that, which campaign would you like vice to show up momentarily in? <laughs> Oh, he just phase this... out of existence. Like he is just this... like you sneak so well that you're like behind a bush in another world entirely. Like what <laughs> other campaign? Vice and four keeps? Yeah, we'll just have like just... Vice's oh. ass, and he's just like, <laughs> and like It'd then be disappears. Funnier if he was an SCP, just in an entirely different universe. Yeah. <laughs> okay, it's um the Curse of Strahd universe. Okay, as Kefris and Irene are getting married, Vice is behind a tree laughing with, like, the sicko um, emote. <laughs> because yes. he knows that Strahd's gonna come down and kick Kefris's pansy ass. Oh my god. <laughs> Love that. Okay, yes. That game's Strahd, finished, so boom, cannon. Strahd is also there with a very big frown on her face. No, if anything, Strahd's there, the one with, like, the hands rubbing, just... Just I'm fucking get this guy. <laughs> I'm fucking eat the shit out of him. Um, <laughs> so, so all that's left is you eating your cupcake then, Clout. Yeah, so, yeah, Clout eats cupcake. <laughs> Twist off the bottom, put it on top, make it a little sandwich. That's how you do it. Okay, so. Yeah. With a 40 stealth and, and Lowry as a mouse. Uh, he, look, Vice rolled so well. We're not even going to bother. Like, if this was, like, a group <laughs> check. He rolled so well, he's walking out in the open with the confidence that he won't be noticed. Yeah. Like, it's it's fine. Like, again, like, you have, like, a small box. Like, you're, it's basically, like, a USPS or, like, a FedEx guy, like, walking through an office building. You're like, oh, clearly that guy's supposed to be there. He's making a delivery. Like, that's the kind of vibe that Vice is giving oh, off Oh, he would have, right like, now. pulled his hood up, too, just to, like... Empathize. Oh, is that it? Are you Marvel stealthing? You just put the sunglasses and the hat on, and now nobody will recognize you. The Clark Kents. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Okay, There's so... There's a little mouse head poking out of the pocket. Uh, Balhadur will keep a bit of a distance due to the fact that they are the noisiest of the group and would probably be a foil to Vice's success. <laughs> okay. So, with that, um, Clout and Balhadur... Make your stealth checks. Balhadur, obviously, oh. you would be rolling with disadvantage, being invisible. Disadvantage plus 10, yeah. <laughs> gives you advantage on that, so it just evens out, so it's your nat roll plus 10. Mm 
Oops. So what are we looking at? I got a 16 plus 10 gives me a 26. Okay. 25. Oh, shit. Okay. Yeah, so everyone, like, easily is going to be able to go into the workshop. So, as you kind of like, all right, everyone, gear up. We got this. And everyone disappears from fucking existence. Uh, you are able to go into the next room, and the next room that you see is this cavernous underbelly of the stage is noisy and hot. Goblins work a forge, saw wood, and daub paint onto wooden backdrops. A woman in a tight-fitting dress barks orders at the workers while a goblin frantically makes adjustments to her costume using needles, pins, and and thread. A tiny creature chained to a hooded lantern on a tabletop is using a stick of charcoal to sketch something on a piece of parchment at unbelievable speed. A wispy bulb of light flutters next to him. Mm. And for uh, for fun, I would say, this is uh, what the woman looks like. She has what appears to be like this... One uh, of the wicked stepsisters! Yeah, One we've got the, a prima donna here. Uh, purplish scar. Like, it's not really like a scar. It's more of like a, a, a set of face paint that extends from like her forehead down covering both eyes and almost this like dramatic teardrop style shape. She's wearing this uh, luxurious green scaled uh, uh, dress that this goblin is again sort of like following her around trying to pin on that is almost reminiscent of like uh, uh, some kind of like reptilian like scale uh, in in its design kind of like its sheen almost in that like bluish green peacock uh, style color and then it of course has like that outer frill extending over the back and she is uh, yelling at uh, this brigandock that you see he's like desperately working with the charcoal and she says, no, 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 it has to be better. It has to be bigger, something more fantastic and vibrant. Come on. And then you see her take out a pipe, breathe it in, and blows it directly onto the Briganok. And she says, Endelin said that the smoke from this thing was supposed to, like, help you get all of your shitty little ideas out on the paper faster. So why aren't you working? Why aren't you actually doing the thing that you are being let to, that you're being allowed to live to do? You'd think that you would work a little bit harder. And you just hear this, yes, ma'am, sorry, ma'am. <laughs> like, Briganok, like, continues to mark on the charcoal. And inside of this room, it is not just her. It is not just the goblin that is, uh, like, making sure that her that shit's good uh, on the dress. All things considered, there are roughly, uh, I want to make sure that the number is right on this, that there are, I believe, something like 18 goblins in this room. But they are all like busy working, doing other things, because she seems like very much like the prima donna slave driver of the costuming and and like she's like a prop master but in the kind of like the scary story of prop master that you hear if anything she's like like the the dominatrix version of a prop master all right vice you're on point oh to sneak okay yeah there are 18 <laughs> unarmed goblins Unarmed, you say? Yes. Easy Eighteen, fight. you say? <laughs> but uh, I could take like three. Cloud could take ten. Squeak. If they're in a fifteen-foot coin, I, uh, cone, fight, I could take right? like twenty. Um, yeah. In a fight, is there a? Um, can I see a clear path to get to the Briganok? Like, oh, she is like at the table that the Briganok is is working on so as far as a clear path it's yeah. really does someone have mage hand or a really good throwing arm we could toss something yeah, to make a distraction 
Yeah, I've got Mage Hand, but as soon as I cast it, my invisibility goes down. Only if you attack another creature. No, it's... <clears throat> if or you cast, cast a spell. Oh. Yep. Hmm. As a former rogue wizard, I know all about that bullshit. <laughs> is, is, is Whisper still here? Whisper. Just have them slap up on the side of her head for a while. Piss her off. Or I could just speak into her mind and piss her off. Squeak, squeak. <laughs> That's what she said. For Two for yes. Uh, squeak, squeak. Do we really want to do this now, or should we try and scout some things out first? My vote's for the latter, but... Let's... Squeak, squeak. For the sake of argument, I would also like to point out that if you guys had said that you were going to scout and do other things, Gleam, who is not able to turn invisible, does not want to be caught here in Motherhorn, is like, I'll wait in the Breakenock Tunnel. Like... Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's good point. We send her way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, let's let's scout around. Maybe her eye gets directed somewhere else later down the line. Okay. Let's not go that way. Let's go. So you see that there is a exit to the north, and the room extends into the south. There seems to be stairs. Where are we on our map? Uh, we um, are in the bottommost. You are area. M11, the bottommost, yep. Thank you. Yeah, this is why I figured it would be easier mm -hmm. to just give you all a map rather than me trying to be like, yeah, it's another room, more exits and entrances. All of us have too much ADHD between the five of us to, to justify remember what remembering said. cardinal directions without a fucking map. Yeah. yeah. Vaisal nod his head up to where M2, uh, the stairs going up to M2 would be. Okay. Oh, the invisible people nod back. <laughs> the mouse nods back. Okay. It's very odd. <laughs> so going to M2. All right. And yeah, when... Uh, as, as you are uh, heading up there, you see that uh, this woman, again, like, she has, like, a, a large pulled fan that she'll, like, clap shut and then, like just like hit people on top of their heads with uh and then she'll like turn it back to a full fan and just keep fanning herself uh complaining about the heat and all the while just like smoking freely from this pipe um rude. yeah she's rather rude about it but as you exit uh going into m2 uh as you arrive you see that uh it is an open air amphitheater is carved from the slope of the mountaintop Short cloaked figures sit on tiered stone benches facing the stage. Enclosing the stage are ten foot high stone walls, above which you can see the stormy sky. A team of masked goblins is preparing the stage for a play while costumed actors huddle in the wings and recite lines. Lighting is provided by an intricate overhead contraption upon which several more masked goblins are perched. The sounds of chains clanking and gear Ears turning can be heard coming from somewhere under the mountaintop, and you're guessing that those sounds are coming from, well, the room that you just left. Are they wearing matching masks, or are they all? They are not. Expressions? They all have different expressions on the masks oh, that they're wearing. wearing. Other people. Good. Gross. <laughs> but like these that. goblins are... are wearing goblin masks, and the goblins on the goblin masks are very much, you know, like. And one of them has, like, a look of, like, they're a little too into it. <laughs> but, like, the others are horrified. Wait, wait. Fulfill my morbid curiosity. What it's is like the biting its... Huh? What's the material of the masks? It's wood. Okay. Yeah, they're not that flesh. that makes it any better. <laughs> or latex. Yeah, no. Thankfully, it's not. Like, there are no zippers or anything like that. It is just a wooden mask that you can wear. Somebody stop me. Uh, and as since you all came from M2 and you can kind of hear uh, these actors uh, speaking to uh, speaking to each other, you see that there are the three that there are three of them. You see that there is a uh, a, a female uh, high elf 
we see that there is a uh, a male goblin and this goblin looks very different than the other goblins and they speak with a a much different cadence and kind of like looking nearish them you see that they have this like it's like on their neck but it's a tattoo but it's not like a tattoo that you would expect to have been made by man it looks like this is some sort of birthmark that is sort of spread onto itself but in a strange pattern and vice uh being an individual aligned as you are with dragon kin uh you would recognize that as a dragon mark uh hmm. which uh leads you to assume that this goblin is not from round here uh compared to the other goblins and last but not least you see a uh a non-binary mountain dwarf uh and they are all sort of like huddled and like actively speaking and it looks like the uh what they are speaking and kind of rehearsing their lines for uh is you hear them saying how are we going to put on the lament of a suckling boar with only the three of us we clearly need more people uh vice notes that down in his head mm -hmm. Yeah, and from where you're sitting, you can see that there are about 25 of these hooded individuals that are just sitting, looking down towards the stage. But again, all of you, still stealthed, still invisible, still laughing at Kefris and Irina, making a really dumb, dumb decision. If anything, now you're, you're laughing at the proposal of Kefris and Irina, which was a different set of stupid circumstances. But... <laughs> Oh god, I am, actually. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you have not been noticed, so, uh, from this area, uh, to the south, you can see that there is an exit way as well, and then to the north, northeast, and, uh, or to the north, northwest, southwest, sorry, west, northwest, southwest, you see that there are several uh, prong uh, staircases that lead into different areas as well. And then what looks like big old cranes uh, that lead that are on the back. Yeah, uh, on the back end. Uh, yeah, if see. you look at the lower yes. floor, there seems to be a dock. Uh, it's probably for airships and stuff. That is correct. Delivering directly Orbimps. into the underbelly. Yep, <laughs> zeppelins. Anybody have any ideas? Or should we bumble around until we find uh, Creepy Lynn? Let's just keep on moving. We should know where everything is. Like, just memorize as many rooms as we can. Maybe just climb exactly. as many stairs as we can until we find the top. And then later when we do whatever we do, we know what we're getting into. All right. Okay. Um, yeah. We'll head up the main middle stairs to M7. Okay, so to M7. And again, like, as you're walking up, like, there are a few, like, and you can kind of see uh, these hooded individuals um, and kind of get a, a closer look. And they have, uh, you've seen creatures like this before. It seems that the 25 hooded uh, creatures uh, are what are known as darklings that are sitting here waiting for uh for a show to start weird but yes you ascend the stairs you go to m7 and as you approach this place this magnificent hall is lined with stone bookshelves housing a library of leather-bound tomes. Three elderly, bespeckled goblins climb ladders to fetch books for three slender, cloaked figures who are reading while seated in overstuffed armchairs. And looking around at these books as well, you can see very much like Break a Leg uh, informed you that most of these are just, like, black-bound leather journals that just, like, repeat almost ad nauseum throughout. Although you do spot 
uh, that one book looks particularly out of place, and that is it is a hefty green covered tome with a withered frog stitched into the spine. Can I just slide a hand that off the shelf? Yeah, make a slide a hand check. Give me. <clears throat> uh, 18. 18? On the dice or in total? In total. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now, with an 18, uh, you are able to procure it from the shelf. And then, let me see here. Yeah, it is just uh, a green cover tone with this withered frog stitched into the spine. We'll read that later. Okay. So yeah, just into it. Okay, so from M7, there is a exit to the north, there is an exit to the south, and then there is one to the northwest as well. I guess north and then see what's going on. Okay. So north would put you at M9. I'm just going to take our to my token off the map so it's not so cluttered. I'm just in Vice's pocket anyways. Okay. So M9. This shadowy hallway is blocked by a wooden backdrop 10 feet from the entrance. The backdrop is painted to look like a library shelf. Is this concern ever anyone aside from me? Squeak, squeak. All right. Just about everything concerns me nowadays. It's a good habit to have, honestly. And Vice, when you get within five feet of that backdrop, the backdrop just like and like flattens itself against the wall. And you can see that there is another backdrop behind it, which looks like a raging sea. I don't like this. I think it's neat. Vice just tentatively continues on. Okay. When you get within five feet of the one that looks like a raging sea, it too just and then finds its house, uh, its resting place against the wall. And you see that there is a third backdrop that looks like a moonlit graveyard. Oh. We could light a torch behind that. Boom eclipse. We might as well note down every eclipse we can try and pull off while we're in here. <clears throat> Good point. We fashion a sun and moon mask and have one person stand in front of the other, would that count? Oh, we, we can cast shouldn't... daylight directly behind that giant moon. Squeak, 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 squeak. Well, wish I could. Uh, do sounds that. like something I wish I should have been able to hear. <laughs> <laughs> Darling, we can't understand you when you mumble like that. There's just a very narrow-eyed look Aww. at Vice. You ever seen a mouse glare at someone? Just, it's Aww. adorable. I used to right. have a gerbil who'd do that. <laughs> oh, I say three for three. We might as well see what's behind the graveyard. I hope it's a new cart. Oh, okay. Vice approaches the graveyard. Yeah. Big money, big money, no whammy. Yeah, and <laughs> graveyard shifts. Yeah. And you just see that there is a doorway down the way. Yippee. Oh, you know what? Uh, since we so frequently forget about both of them, uh, can I have left Whisper with Gleam? Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Whisper's a little... Oh yeah, we rested. Right. <laughs> Okay, so who is, uh, who's, what's the marching order? Vice, you're still in front? Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Technically yeah, so... parallel is, <laughs> uh, Lowry. Yeah, okay. Lowry is in Vice's pocket. Gotcha. And then Bal and Clout are shoulder to shoulder behind them. Sounds good. Uh, Vice, so... do you have cocktails? 
Yeah, Vice, as you reach the door, I need you to make a dexterity saving throw as the floor beneath you gives way. <laughs> Savage! Uh -oh. You're supposed to be good at those. I am good at these. Oh, no, yeah, I'm excellent at these. Uh, <clears throat> 26. 26? Okay, so Vice, you feel the floor give way, and you jump out of the way. So you do not fall the 10 feet into what looks like a, a very fine, loamy dirt, actually, underneath. It did cause a little bit of... Uh, it, it was a loud occurrence, mind you. Mm. But you are not do... looking down with it. Yeah. Well... I guess I'll just duck my head in here real quick and find out what's going on and pop back over. Jeez, I... it. That made a loud noise. Somebody might be coming. There's been a lot of loud noises, though. People yelling and moving props. Vice is going to poke lucky. his head into M10 and then okay. see what it is. So inside of M10, and with Vice especially, just like, don't worry, I'll be back fine. It's no problem. I'm as two weeks does. away from retirement. Yeah, yeah. I don't do I just partners bought anymore. I mouse in my pocket. Yeah, so... I just bought this red shirt. <laughs> All right, so Lowry and Vice. The two of you see that there are rows of tiered seating that fill the back half of this theater, and motes of dust float and dance above the ancient upholstery. The seats face a stone stage flanked by wooden silhouettes of fir trees lit from behind above by a white moon-like sphere of glass that hangs from the ceiling by a short chain and casts long shadows on the wall. Suspended above the stage is a trapeze. This place There's is a like lot of a. stages. And a lot of moons. <laughs> squeak, 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 squeak. Lowry is squeaking in the pocket, pointing at the trapeze. I, I understand. Yes, I understand. Squeak. <laughs> okay. Do you, though? Do you just, like, yeah. poke your head in and see it, and then, like, well, cry it out? Yeah, people are telling me to run, so okay. see Person. it, and then... <laughs> <laughs> That's not what Lowry's trying to communicate. <laughs> Okay. Sounds good. Okay. So yeah, head on back. Jump over it. Uh, Vice, I would like for you to roll another stealth check. Oh boy. A stealth would have been broken by the activation of the trap. Ah, uh, it's only a 38. Only. <laughs> Jesus. Okay. Yeah, so that's fine. Uh, your friends have been waiting uh, inside of the library and Clout and Balhadur. Uh, if you would like, you could have been kind of like idly looking at these books as well. Okay. Um, so with those black books, um, uh, you would need to spend at least an hour to get everything that you would need to out of those. Oh, nah. <laughs> yeah. Um, nope. Yeah, got that kind of time. No, at Take this point, uh, based on the amount of travel that you've done, because you've explored one, two, three, four rooms now, I would say that you roughly have about twenty minutes left on your invisibilities. Uh, Balhadur is going to peek into the western hallway to see where it leads. Okay, the westernmost hallway. Uh, yeah, you see that down that westernmost hallway that there is a set of stairs uh, that look like they lead to an upper level, and then that hallway goes into what would be a small room at the end. And you see that the room has a door on it. Okay. Noted. Turned around. <laughs> okay. But yeah, so then Vice and uh, Lowry come back. And Lowry, just as a refresher, how long does Pass Without Trace last? Is it an hour as well? Yeah, That's 10 yes. minutes. Is it 10 minutes? I thought it was an hour. You, you should check, actually. I'm yeah. not sure. <laughs> that's why we want it. That's One why hour. I'm asking. One hour? Okay. One hour? Yep. Okay. okay. That's cool. what I so think. All run out at the, the same time. Yeah, everyone, everyone <laughs> clocks down all at once. So that's fine. That's good. Just Except wanted to make sure. Except for me. Yes. 
Okay. Can't stealth when there's someone like me next to you. So, <laughs> you have enough time, potentially, to explore two more rooms before you have to haul ass backwards or come up with another way of staying invisible deeper in this place. I'll whisper to the group. I found at least a staircase that leads up to the next level in another room down the western hallway. So do we have enough time to continue? I think we should pull back. What kind of door does that southern one look like? It kind of looks like a cell door or something? Or Let like a see. metal bars? So that door... Looks like it is just like where the others have been like nicer stage curtains, that sort of thing. This definitely looks like it is a like a sturdier door. Like it was made with the intent to either stay shut uh, during whatever happens back there or that whoever has it shut doesn't want others to be able to freely come and go from it. You don't see that there's a place necessarily for a lock. Uh, so you're not assume you're you're assuming that this door is not locked however it is definitely something where this room looks a little bit more foreboding than the others i recommend we take a look at that southern door real quick before we work our way out and when you say southern door in m7 because initially the doorway that you had looked at was on the westernmost doorway that then led up so when you say southern doorway it's just the doorway that you have that you guys haven't gone to yet correct yeah okay cool just wanted to make sure so that way i wasn't gonna say like oh yeah and then you find this thing oh that wasn't the door okay cool so you want to be going into m what is uh listed as m4a yeah okay got it okay so yeah taking a a quick a quick peek you see that this room is chocked with a variety of props and costumes, there seems to be no order in this place. And looking around uh, in this room, you see that there is a chest full of powdered wigs, each one crawling with harmless spiders, a mouse trap three feet wide and eight feet long, and a parasol topped with a copper weather vane. Right, noted. <laughs> yeah. My people aren't the best at keeping track of time, but I think we don't have enough to look into this room, but at least we have an idea of what's over there. I would say this room is is easy enough to suss out that you could get one more room in. So do you want to go along the westernmost hallway? Or do you want to go... Because there, uh, there is what looks like a curtain door to the south... Or to the west, there is another hallway. So south or west? I think if we go south, we can quicken our pace back down to M11. That is correct. Yeah. So at least we explore something and get back. Yeah. Let's, Let's go do the thing. do it. Okay, so just going down to M11? Uh, We're checking M5. Checking M4A, it looks like. M4A is the one with all of, like, the wigs and stuff like that that you were able to find. And then going into M3, so we can get back to M2. Okay, M3. M3, also known as Stage Left. It's a wooden platform is embedded into the stone floor at the end of the corridor. An iron lever is fixed to the wall nearby. And Clout and Vice, the two of you having been around carnivals Show and the biz. stage and the old razzle-dazzles long enough, you would know that this wooden floor is actually a stagehand elevator uh, that they use for props that can carry up to 750 pounds. So you All can right. either activate the elevator which will cause quite a commotion to lower yourselves back down, or you can just sneak by, uh, sneak by the stage again. Or we could lower it to cause a commotion and then sneak down to the stage while people are distracted. Yeah, like and that. And get one. our little buddy. Yeah. 
It seems like a good idea if we're working our way out from here. <clears throat> we could just sneak all the way down and then I could mage hand yoink him and make a run for it. Yes, but then that would lead everyone back to the Brigadnock Tunnel. All right, good point. So then Vice is the sneakiest of us, so they can pull this lever and work their way out the invisible ones. We're on a timer, so we should probably get down there before we become visible. That's also smart. Right. And Lowry's here with him, so at least he won't be alone. Exactly. <laughs> All right, let's make it happen. Uh, give me a minute and then do the honors. Uh, Nods. Uh, you feel a jab in the middle of your chest. Don't do anything stupid. A gentle kiss on the side of your head. <laughs> I believe in you. And Does then... <laughs> your visibility break for assaulting me like that, Clout? He's assaulting you. Damage. Playful. <laughs> Ow, it really hurt me emotionally. I took I'm wounded. I need sexy emotion. help. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I, I think that me and Cloud should probably start scooting. Okay. Scoot scoot. Boogie. New boot scooting. You guys are getting on out of there. Uh, so Clout, you and Balhader are making your way back down into the tunnels. Vice, you are waiting to then... Cloud was gonna pull, and then I was gonna. Okay. Oh shit! Wait. So is Cloud? Cloud and Balhader are going yeah. across the stage because yeah. you're invisible to then go down. Yeah. And then I exit. don't like the way you're saying it. We but are yes. establishing what's happening because there yeah, is a little bit of confusion. The there is a confusion. <laughs> okay. There is a little bit of confusion. So Clout and Balhader are going across the stage, down the thing, back into the Briganok tunnel. Vice, you yes. are going to. Pull the lever. Crunk. And then mad da stealth dash. Okay. Stealth dash then also across mm -hmm. into the workshop to then stealthily grab the little man mm -hmm. and then rush into the Briganok mine when people are distracted. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay. Cool. If everything goes well. If everything <laughs> goes well. So... Clout and Balhader, I'd like for you two to make new stealth checks for me because you will be leaving the area of effect for the Pass Without Trace from yeah, Lowry. It's Unless, fine. Vice, you wanted to pass Lowry off to Clout and Balhader. Well, I was going to pour oil all over the lift and then light it on fire, then send it down. That's definitely a thing you can do. I would like... To inspire Balhador. I do not need to be able to see them to do so. Okay. They only need to be able to hear me. Okay. Okay, so again, okay. you don't get the plus 10 for your stealth unless uh, Lowry is getting passed off to the other friends. I, I just nat 20 my stealth. Okay, you're good. Oh, remember, Balhader, you did just get a Bardic Inspiration as well. You are inspired. I'm trying to get that next die out first, but the freaking... There we go. Get out of the way, chat. <laughs> okay. So now I can look at the results of the two of them. attacking my leg. Is that you, Bram? The old monster. Plus... It's a... You got a D8? Yes, a D8. Okay. Um, when we say you're looking at the results of the two of them, are you meaning... Are you rolling with disadvantage? Yeah. Because it's a flat roll because you're invisible. The invisibility cancels oh. out the disadvantage. Did you just max out that uh, Bardic Inspiration, though? I did. Uh, so then part. technically the first uh, roll would have been it anyway. So either way, I'm taking the lower one. Um, plus eight is 17. Okay. If I, had a, if I had a nickel for every time my Bardic Inspiration maxed out, I would have a lot of nickels. It happens frequently. I should probably <laughs> play a bard forever. Just saying, Bard's fun. All right, thankfully they rolled low. Because again, a lot of the people that are like sitting here waiting, like one of them as like you're going out and Balhadur, like you kick, you like make a little kicky noise that you weren't expecting or like your armor jingles. And like you look over invisibly at these darklings that are sitting there. And like one of them is like sitting upright, 
hands sort of like steepled on their gut. But you can see that their eyes are closed. And they're just like sleeping in place. Like they're just like waiting for a thing and you just like able to. Okay. No one has to die. And then <laughs> the throat calms back down. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So yeah, you and Clout are able to then get to the stairwell and are at the base of the stairwell when Vice, you wanted to... Set us up the bomb? Set up a... Uh, uh, uh... I have a flask of oil okay. in my inventory. Uh -huh, uh -huh. I also have a torch. Uh -huh, so uh -huh, I pour uh -huh. the contents of the oil onto the lift. Pull the lever, light the torch, wait like two seconds, and then throws the torch onto the lift before like scooting away. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so yeah, Vice, you do this. Uh, Clout and Balladur, you get to the base of the stairs, and again, uh, uh, this woman, Charmé, uh, is like berating all, all of the workers. Um, and just to make a... And Cloud just got attempted murder. <laughs> uh, yeah, so so Clout and Balhadur, the two of you are able uh, to get in. And you can see, because, like, the, the workroom stretches and where the actual, like, lift is is kind of towards the back area. So you can see that it is, like, coming down and there is, like... There's a fire going there now, I guess. And so you just see it steadily going. And Charmé doesn't look like she's really, like, taken stock of it yet. Can I... Can I attempt to throw my voice and, like, point out the fire? Would you like for this to be a use of thaumaturgy? Or would you like yes, for this I would. to be a use of... <laughs> No, uh, I wouldn't. Uh, of, my of own voice, deception. because thaumaturgy is a spell. I'm, dece I'm deceiving. That is correct. So again, we just want to make sure. However, with thaumaturgy, you can make the fires augmented. Oh, I absolutely could, but it's a spell, You're you right. See. Shame on me <laughs> for trying to bait you to break the invisibility. Anyways, yes. Uh, make a deception check or a sleight of hand check for me to throw your voice. Uh, either is the same. It's fine. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a bard. Bird. I'm a bard. 22. A 22? Okay, so yeah, as you, uh, exclaim, there is that moment where, uh, Charmé is, like, like, doesn't pay attention to the cries of the workers. She is used to hearing people be beleaguered and upset around her, and, you know, that's nothing new, and them yelling fire is, like, what? Of, of, of course there's a fire. You're working the forge until eventually, like, she starts clocking it. But Clout, you and Balhadur do have enough time to exit. And you see that she's still around the table. Vice, as you make your way down, now that Charmé has been uh, um, informed of the fire, we will say, uh, let me just see here. I mean, once I'm in the room where it doesn't really matter so much that I'm not invisible, I am happy to thaumaturgy those flames into a you would small... need to see, You would need to be able to see them, sadly. Well, I mean, yeah. line of sight does not necessarily mean people can see me. That's true. But yeah, so Vice, you come down the stairs, and at that point, you can see that Charmé... Uh, like comes down and she is like yelling at the goblin workers uh to to like take care of the fire and like her back is turned to the table uh where this little brigandock is like trying to like pull these heavy chains off of themselves uh being connected uh to this uh hooded lantern uh, would you like to would you like to steal them away? Uh, yeah. Vice okay. Is gonna hurriedly cross the room, establish a mental connection. Don't make a sound. I'm getting you out of here. And you just see like the Briganox stop and just bah! like they just look really scared, but they stop moving. 
So yeah, Vice just, just like slap the shit out of him to like pop him into the hooded lantern. The force like closes the door, grab the lantern, and then you oh, are able to like. I was mimicking lock picking oh, something okay. rapidly, not like. No, you, like he's connected to the lantern, so the easiest thing that you're gonna have to do, that you would be able to do is just like get the fuck in there, close the door. Can I leave the crate that I was holding? Sure. <laughs> like just right at the base, and then just. <laughs> yeah, and uh, Charme, uh, you like is like yelling at these goblins to do something, and then the goblin that was like working on her dress, uh, like. Vice, as you're leaving, you hear him say, uh, But Madame Scalia, aren't you able to do something? And she grabs him by, like, the scruff of his, like, shirt, pulls him up, and in one hand says, I told you, my name is Charmé. And there is, like, an eldritch light that erupts from her hand as you just watch this goblin disintegrate. And then you see her, like unclench her fist as these other goblins are taking care of the fire and she looks and just I have to redo these again and then she like steadily turns towards where the Briganok is no longer and your group is just like getting the fuck out of here oh no Vice well, has feelings yeah, Vice wait, has did feelings. we see that? only Vice that just okay yeah only Vice uh, would have at this point right so, as you all get back into the Briganok mine, rescued Briganok in, like, the football carry, making your way out of Motherhorn after a successful stealth operation, that is where we are going to go into our break for the evening. We're going to try and be back in five to ten minutes. Don't go no place unless it's to grab a food, grab a drink, grab a friend, or possibly go to indooradventure.redbubble.com. Pick yourself up something nice, and we'll see you guys shortly. All right, everybody. See you soon! And we're back! Hello, everybody, and welcome! We just watched some horrible shit go down, but... A Briganok was saved! Yay! Hooray! Hey, Simon, yeah. why can I write all of the horrible shit I've seen during a campaign? Ah, uh, man, okay, so... Get this, right? So, like, for the longest time, I was using sticky notes, I was using OneNote, I was using all of these things, but it was so difficult to actually keep track of stuff because of my ADHD, you know? So, like, I, I I would write something on a sticky note, and then I would put it somewhere, and I would forget about it entirely. But did you know that the company, therookandtheraven.com, they make incredible journals. I don't have mine on me because I actually took mine to my partners over the weekend, but Sarah's got, like, two on her right now there's got one that's got like a sick leather cover which i believe they had a giveaway for Cute little rainbow binding uh yeah so <laughs> is the giveaway uh, still one, going on uh i'm not sure i haven't seen an announcement for it yet i can double check um but yeah there were only 25 of these made and one was auctioned off uh that was not given to the uh folks that they work with and the other one was uh in a raffle so I will double check and see if those are still available. Yeah, but no, they have they have really cool uh, like bindings for all of the pages that you can get, and they have completely modular pages too. So for me, mine are specifically for like dungeon mastery notes. But if you want like a character journal, if you want like even just like you could play uh, uh, the dots game on it. Like there are all sorts of stuff mm -hmm. that you can do with the journals from the Rook and the Raven .com. And the best part about it now, again, this is the best part is that if you use the code HYPEGOBLIN, not THE HYPEGOBLIN, just HYPEGOBLIN on checkout, it's 15% off your entire order. That's not mm -hmm. just the pages. That's not just the key bindings. That's not just the limited edition, sometimes specially could go out of print covers. So if you see one, you know, you better hop on it. There are so many things that you can get on shop.therookandtheraven.com and the code HYPEGOBLIN, again, just HYPEGOBLIN, gives you 15% off your entire purchase. It's a wonderful deal. It's how I ended up getting my Rook and the Raven journal, which is in my backpack in the other room because, again, I was actively using it this weekend. But if you want one for yourself, again, shop.therookandtheraven.com. Mm-hmm. I'll have to order another insert because you know what? I've been enjoying planning so much with my notebooks that I finally started planning my first campaign. <gasps> so I can't even show you guys the inside of this one anymore. I want to, no. I want spoilers. to go to there. <laughs> no spoilers, sweetie. Hey, hey. Well, speaking of things that aren't spoilers, let's do a little bit of a recap of where we last left off. You all ran up 
in Motherhorn. He spent about an hour there. It was a good fashion, old ragtag time. Vice lit some shit on fire. Cost a distraction enough for you to be able to steal this little Briganok. So, thankfully, your group was able to get back to the Briganok caves where Gleam and Whisper had sort of just been like waiting. Uh, and it seems like Gleam actually remembers Whisper because Whisper isn't a new figurehead at the Witchlight Carnival. Wig uh, uh, Whisper's been there for a while. So, if anything, Gleam has, like, a little bit of a rapport with Whisper. Um, which, Clout, when you show up, it's just like, what the fuck are you talking about? How are you talking about it? Why are you talking about it? Is it about me? Why is it about me? Uh, but, uh, Gleam is is very glad to see uh, you all have, have returned successfully. And uh, Vice, you, with this, like, again, football carrying this hooded lantern... Uh, into the passageway, end up like opening it up, uh, and you see that there is a very small, very like shaken looking Briganok uh, that like looks up at you and just. Hey, 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 no, 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 we're gonna get you home. Back to your momover. Squeak, squeak. Molliver. You. You know. Oliver? Yeah, we're, we're his buddies. Really? Squeak. I mean, I almost killed them once, but technically we <gasps> ended in amicable state. Squeak, 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 squeak. Every day, hold on. Squeak. Let's little fish her out of his pocket and put her down on the floor. Dismisses the wild shape. <sighs> I won't scare the poor little thing. I am easily frightened. They sort of, like, bring their hands up close to their chest, and you can see that their fingers are just, like, jet black from charcoal. Just, uh, uh, are we really going home? Mm hmm It's been yeah. so long. Eight years. Have they been unlocked yet? They're still, like, kind of, like, in the hood, like, attached to the hooded lantern. But I would say, <laughs> like, you're able to, like, hand wavy enough. Uh, to take a 10. Yeah, you can take a 10 on that one. That's fine. Using that old 3.5 verbiage. Uh, yeah, you can take a 10 on that one. So uh, you are able to get uh, Golmo uh, the Briganok free. Hmm. Been trapped for eight years, and Molliver has only been in this cave for eight years. I wonder if they even know who they are. They seem to have they seem to uh acknowledge the name anyways. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, You're welcome. If you are going through this way, I assume that there is a way out. Hi. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <gasps> and you see like their eyes get like really wide if you've ever seen dom from animal crossing where it looks like that sheep is like on the verge of crying at all times that's what golmo is right now and like as a small creature they're like very thin very frail oh chihuahua oh oh oh, oh dear come come here come here <laughs> real copper hands to pick them up. just like they'll hop over and you can see that they're like the Whereas the other Briganox that you've met, their soul spheres that are on the outside are very, like, potent looking. Theirs looks, like, very shriveled and small. Oh, baby. Um, would you like a gummy worm? Vice, you have the idea that if you gave that amount of sugar Don't to that dare. small of a creature, you would kill them. <laughs> what if I lopped off, like... A little bit. You might want to start with something more nutritious for them. Like a real worm would probably you, be like a great thing. Have you eaten anything recently? This week? This. Um, I even have food. I a real take a, a real take a ration out of her bag and they break usually it up. throw me some crumbs when I faint. You poor thing. Uh, Lowry's gonna take her hat off and tip it over 
So the Briganok can just sit comfortably and rest in her hat. The Briganok um, will like climb into it and just Yeah, she'll she'll break up some of her rations um and and give them with its some little rations bush and some baby water. hands, it will take the food and just God, this, is <laughs> this is my child now. <laughs> I'm your mommy now. <laughs> Um, and after a little bit of food, you can see that it has like the cartoonishly like pot belly, and it just like it, <laughs> Simon, why? And it makes little like <laughs> me 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 me. It makes little me me me's. I'm surprising no one. These people are pretty terrible. How could okay. anyone be so mean to them? Does anyone have a handkerchief or something small that I could put over them as a blanket? I. Uh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> you drape it and you see them again like little thingies just like tuck it in under their chest. <laughs> you and they switch be... from me me me's to honk shoe. <laughs> uh, you shouldn't be surprised at the cruelty people are capable of, Miss Moon. Oh, I'm not surprised. But I still question it. Well, I assume... Dad sure What? The lady. My father was wonderful. No, not you. The woman upstairs who was berating all the goblins and our dear friend here. One of the goblins called her Scala. It's a name from the League of Malevolent Douchebags. Uh, intent. I remember you mentioning meeting at least one of them at some point. Yes, um, I wonder how he's faring right now. Uh, I believe he looted a cave full of cursed gold. <clears throat> well, I suppose yeah. we should bring this little one back to their family, and then we can look into, well, planning our assault. Honk shoo. Honk shoo. We, we should continue on quietly. I really wish we could have found the uh, room with all the masks. Be great to get a hold of Glimmer. G Glister. Uh, but uh, nothing ever goes as easily as one would expect, so I think it was a success nonetheless. We could always yeah. try and find them and do a round two. I, I think if we uh, line this up right and destroy one of those towers draw out a bunch of their security, then we should definitely go back in for an assault and find our friend's friend and uh, end this tyrant. Yeah. Why Let's, stop uh, at one tower? Bring it that all is down. a lot of work. It would be a lot of work, but without any power, even the semblance of power struck Oh, so just taking down one would only reduce the power rather than just cut off the circuitry? I believe mm -hmm. so. Ah, it's a Zor switch, actually, then. All right. So we should try and take down as many as we can. We're going to need some help. We've got Let's all the go friends assemble we need. our puzzle pieces, then. Okay. Yeah, and you make your way, and as you're walking, after you walk for maybe, I want to say, like, it, it takes a while getting through these caves, and it took a while the first time, but as you actually continue on, you hear, um, uh, you just hear, oh, damn it, not again, and, like, you look around, and you see that, like, in a corner, somehow tangled up in their own wires again, uh, is break a leg. And then get... Break a Leg sees you all coming, just, you know, we really gotta stop meeting like this. Uh, can I pick them up by their strings? <laughs> and, like, they unfurl in them as you do, and just, oh, hey! Do you need these strings to function, or can we just tear them off? You know, I've always been kind of scared about the idea of cutting them, but you know what? Screw it! Cut me loose! Cut me loose! I want to see what I can do! Twist the marionette strings together. Front snap! Chicka boot! Like they just fall onto the ground and just. 
All right. All right, everybody stay cool. Everybody be cool for just a little bit, okay? I'm gonna try something. And you see, like, them, like, you hear, like, a rattling of wood, and then an elbow goes up. Just, ah! And then the hand goes up. Ah! Okay, mm -hmm. okay. Oh my Are god! You doing it? Oh my god, I can't feel my hands! Ah, just kidding, I can't feel them at all, and he pops back up and stands <laughs> on TV. Hey! Look at you, You're up and about, using your own legs. Thank you, you so much. I ain't got no strings on me anymore, except all these, like, little trails. I hope they don't get caught on nothing. Oh, we can trim those. <gasps> You're all fantastic, and I love you. Uh oh, I love I've you heard too. what love is. We should, though, continue moving back to the main uh, group so that we aren't 25 feet away from the castle. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh... <laughs> yeah. Come here, buddy. I'll see what I can do about those <gasps> strings. And he, like, goes over and just uppies? I don't call it that. He just, like, how picks about them a, up. How about a pick-me-up? I ah? didn't call it uppies. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he's gonna pick him up and, like, tie all of the strings, uh, like, at the ends, uh, and then just trim. Just thank you so much. Y'all so wonderful. And I think that, like, by the time you finished, like, getting the bits off, like, you're relatively close to the, uh, exit of this, uh, of the secret tunnel to return back to the Briganok Mines. And when you do, um... You see, uh, like, at this point, Golmo is just, like, eh, like, get doing, like, really big stretches, being, having comfortably slept for the first time in a while inside of this hat. Uh, but you are able to see that uh, Keg the Pony has sort of, like, gotten down uh, on, like, has, like, kind of at a kneel as far as this horse goes and is just, like, kind of, like, resting there. Uh, and, uh, Obud, uh, has, like, a little, like, a little rake, like, a little, like, rakey hoe kind of thing, and they are just on the back of Keg, and it looks like they're, like, working tirelessly in the field, but really they're just, like, combing the hair of this horse that they've kept in a cave. <laughs> uh, but Obud, uh, ends up seeing you and just, oh, oh, you're back, w welcome! Uh, all, of there. all of you are still here. That's a plus. That's good. Oh, and it looks like you made some friends. Hi there, little fella. Uh, I'm going to need you to sign for this. And he'll point to the Briganock they have in the hat. <gasps> it, oh. <laughs> Put. But, okay, okay, up, up, uh, uh, uh. And, like, they will look at Whisper, and they'll speak something. Do any of you speak Sylvan? I do! All oh, of I you, know. I guess. Well, I don't, three actually, out I don't of them. actually speak, yeah. Just everyone but Vice. <laughs> I speak Elvish, it's close enough. Wow. Somebody's, somebody's wow. got to. Wow, 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 Honestly, wow, wow, wow. I think actually that's the only two languages I know. Uh, oh, no, I actually know like ten. Okay. Yeah, and well, uh, Obud will actually like address Whisper uh, and ask them to go and get one of the other Briganox, and Whisper just seems like nods and goes and does it. Duh. Hmm. Is any of us have feeling a little to send long distance messages? Well, I'm not skilled in the long distance message, you know, but we have messengers. And then eventually, like, Whisper shoots back. Uh, and then, like, what, like, two more Briganox appear, and one of them looks like a lot like. They look like they don't ever skip any day in their workout routine. Like, they are just like this jacked little mouse, jacked man. Jacked two inch tall. <laughs> yeah, just, ah! But, like, it looks like they're... It, 
It looks like they're like a Rob Layfield version of a Brigandock. Like they just have like more muscles than they know what to do with. But the camera is always covering their feet because, you know, nobody knows how to draw those anyways. And this little Brigandock like goes over and like extends their hands up and like does it in a way that like you can see like the jacked little Brigandock body. Uh, and then like you sort of like hand, uh, you hand Golmo to them and they just like carry them in the most like tender gentle carry that they possibly can and then like make their way uh out so that way you can speak with some uh uh <laughs> some candidness uh and as you do the second brigandock uh that is there as well will actually uh will uh, approach you, Lowry, and you see that they, like, reach into a little, like, rumpus sack that they have, uh, and they pull out what looks like a, a shiny, glowing gem, and they'll set it at your feet, and then oh. they go over uh, to you, Clout, and they put a shiny, glowy gem at your feet. Same with you, Balhader. Same with you, Vice. And then they give, like, a little polite bow, and then leave as well and uh obud uh says well you brought us back the greatest architect that we've ever had here in the brick and Ock mines the idea to have eight foot tall caves three feet wide <laughs> that was golmo's idea you know so that way bolivar would be able to actually go through shame they never saw uh, their plan come to fruition, they got taken from us before that, but they'll see that we uh, were able to pursue their vision just fine. But as our thanks, we looked into it. We come from, us Briganox, come from a city called Wish Come True. Wish Come True is created out of, out of gems and stones and sort of how we throw all the bad wishes down into the ca cavern, the chasm that's behind us, mm -hmm. all of the good wishes turn into rocks like that. So we found things that the, the four of you had actually wished for previously and figured that the best way, I think Wings is frozen, or is just <laughs> really good at holding their eye open. <laughs> Wings is indeed frozen. Spooky. <laughs> Spooky as hell. Um, all right, they froze in Momo form. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but we figured, uh, you know, you, you've, you've helped us out so much that we want uh, to to get... Oh, there she goes! I'm going to reach over and grab Cloud's gem and throw it into the gem of... <laughs> the gem pit of bad dream uh, wishes. I start rummaging through Cloud's pockets and mm -hmm. stuff. I shove Cloud <laughs> into the bad dream stones. Oh. I would like to scold both of my companions. <laughs> <laughs> being gremlins right now. <laughs> uh, so you, you cloud. said that these are wishes that we have made at some point. Yeah, uh, and it turns <laughs> Spit it out, back out into my hand. And uh, as it turns out, uh, and we'll just say that Cloud is like looking at this stone very tentatively. Um, but uh, at least until we figure out uh, how to how to pursue this uh, venture. Um. Uh. Obud says, uh, so whenever you've made a, a good wish or a, a wish that benefits other people or, or for something nice, uh, one of these little stones happens. And so, you know, like it, we, it took us a little bit of time, uh, but we found stones for everybody. So, uh, 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 Miss Moon, Miss Lowry, uh, you, uh, always want to help people is, is what I've heard. And so your wish, your desire to help others, we have so many of those wishes that are deep down in the cave. So we figured, well, you know, you can hold on to them. At least one of them. As a sign of good, as a sign of good faith from us. Uh, okay. Mr. Balhader? You have so many good wishes. 
I just want to say, like, every time one of your kids or grandkids ends up showing up, like, you always wish, like, so, like, just the absolute best for them, you know? And it, like, it's really good as far as our marketability goes. Like, we have, ha, huh, we have an entire area just dedicated to ballot or family wishes. Okay. Like, it's very nice. So we figured, again, uh, one of these wishes uh, would be for you. Well, I always wish good things upon my progeny and members of the clan. I also wish to die, I see, before I, or after I see a great-grandchild. And so, uh, you two have gotten wishes. Uh, and Vice, uh, Obud says, Now, uh, yours took a little bit to find, and I don't want to say that it was, uh, kind of tucked in with a lot of the other ones that we might in the chasm. Uh, but uh, maybe you should uh, be a little bit more, uh, you know, hope good things happen to your friends more often. Uh, make our job easier. Uh, I'm not trying to like tell you what to do. You know, I'm just a little guy. I'm just a little man. Just Vice is slow blinking. Did you just get told to be less of an ass? And Clout, uh, the one that you have, uh, Obud says, And yours, um, we don't find a lot of wit. Are you so I Question, uh, Mr. Clout, would you describe yourself as, uh, more of a realist? Um... I don't really know how to describe myself. What's the one thing that you wish for? Because that's the thing with wishes, is that they act as compound. If you wish for the same thing over and over and over and over again, the gem gets bigger. All right. <laughs> and Clout, um... When you look at the wish stone, it is like three times bigger than everyone else's wish stone. But when you look into it, there should be a face, and you know that there should be a face there, but whoever it is that you are making that wish for has that same kind of like scratchies face blindness over them. Yeah, I got a, I got a condition. A condition that keeps you wishing. And you know, that oh. makes our city all the better. So again, thank you for helping out. With Gulbo uh, here, like, they look a little thin, you know, but thankfully, a little bit of Brigadoc home cooking can fix them up right as right. In the meantime, uh, you've already passed the trial, so the bridge over the chasm's not going to give you any problems. Except maybe that guy. And he points towards uh, Break a Leg, and Break a Leg uh, uh, says, um, uh, just kind of makes like an aside about, like, oh, like, I've already overcome my own strings. Now anything is possible. <laughs> oh, uh, Vice, like, leans out towards the chasm and shouts. Hey, Poe! Yeah? This guy's cool! Man! Yeah, it's, uh, the, it's a little marionette. There's just a, like, uh, a glow of, uh, of acceptance that seems to come from under the bridge. Thumbs up. Last time I crossed the bridge, I got hit by a fireball. Break a leg, sort of nods. That's a tough crowd. Yeah. Tough crowd. Deadly, tough crowd. The riddle you had to solve was telling them a joke. I would be so good at that. I am full of jokes. Absolutely full of them. You You're sure also are. made of wood, so maybe just 
Not a good one to risk on this one. You know what? No, you're right. I'm gonna. I'll keep my. I'll keep my fly shut. It's fine. Mm -hmm. Hop. Uh, and that Obud uh, expresses that you are all more than welcome to uh, spend the night here. If you need to take some time off, get out of the rain. Uh, if you want to speak to Golmo, uh, they should be up uh, relatively shortly uh, in in time for food and that sort of thing. Um, so what is the plan? Do you want to go out and start tearing down these towers? Do you want to wait for Golmo? Do you want to tear down towers and then come back for Golmo? Golmo could send probably, runners. Yeah, uh, yeah. Golmo could probably help us fashion something to tear down the towers. I think we should also speak to the Chords again and see if they'll help us tear the towers down. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're strong sure. against stone. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, uh, you assure the Briganox that you will be back. Don't worry. You have your wish stones. Everything's fine. Um, oh, I would wonder what are we supposed to do with these things? Uh, you would get the guess uh, that these are just a valuable keepsake. Balhadur, uh, a fairly common wish, uh, such as ones for family, friends, that sort of thing. Uh, this is a 50 gold piece gemstone. Uh, right. Vice... Yours would be a 100-piece gemstone. Uh, Lowry, yours is a 50-gold-piece gemstone. And Clouts, yours is a 500-gold-piece gemstone. Gosh. Jesus! <laughs> Man's wishes a lot. The 500-gold-piece is an exceptionally <laughs> original wish. A D. And I think that uh, Gleam would kind of uh, uh, elucidate as to uh, the pricings and the descriptions uh, for the gemstones. Well, make sure not to swallow it and hold on to it till I get home. What? It's a clan thing. Oh. Okay. So, going to speak with the Korids. Uh, exiting out of the Briganok cave. It's been a while since you guys were out under open air, and it's raining again. It's always raining. And, like, in a way, it feels kind of nice versus being trapped in the cave uh, as the rain washes over you, but uh, you're able to make your way over to the Korids, uh, where, with the Korids, um you uh, kind of inform them of the plan that you're going to want to take down some of these complex arcane <laughs> towers. Uh, that... Hey, do you want to help us tear down a fascist regime? Uh, and they are all for it. Uh, they are here uh, to take down these uh, copper lightning rods. Uh, but they explain anyways uh, that... Um, they will be able to help take down, uh, they'd be able to at least take down a couple of them. Uh, they don't think that they'd be able to get all of them, but, uh, if you are interested, they will supply you with enough of this corrid rope, uh, that you would be able to then, like, lash them around the lightning rods to then be able to like have a rope system for it um awesome. so we'll say that uh just kind of let me do a brief checky to see how long they will give you 500 feet of corid rope And it's very strange, like, watching them do this because, like, you see one of them just, like, start stroking their beard. And as they stroke their beard, hair just, like, continues to grow out of it as, like, another cord is, like, pulling it, like, taking steps back. And another one, uh... It's like brushing a cat. Yeah, it's like brushing a cat. Like, there's never... You will always find more hair than the cat possibly has coming off of that cat whenever you brush it. Yes, I'm looking at you. <laughs> uh so yeah you have 600 feet of this corid rope oh 600 uh yes 
I think I said 500, but I'll do 600. It's fine. It's fine. You guys made it in and out of Motherhorn with only lighting one fire. So, you know, give some rewards. But yeah, the Korids seem uh, basically just kind of let them know where they need to be, what they need to do. Um, they would prefer to get the uh, lightning rods that are closest to them. They don't want to have to walk uh, like upwards of 10, 15 miles through the countryside to do this, but like they, they would be able to help at least in some way. Is there any way for us to do a coordinated strike with this? It seems like there's going to be a lot of distance between all of these towers. By the time one or two of these start going down, they'll probably react. By the time we finish the fourth one, they'll have already sorted things out and gone back to the castle. And when you suggest that, Queen Argantle uh, would say, well, Do you have any way of actually communicating with each other over long distances? Because if you want it to actually be a coordinated attack, uh, there's things like birds that you could use if there's a way that you could, like, send vibrations through the stone to let us know. Well, again, oh, it's over I miles. Can get someone a tooth. I don't know what that means, but I'm willing to listen. Oh, if I give someone one of my teeth, I can communicate with them one way telepathically. Kind of. It, it's like when people use the sending spell, except it requires my tooth. Give me the tooth. Does it have to specifically be your tooth, or do you just need teeth in general? No, it has to be one of mine. And I want it. Pull, I want the tooth. She'll, she'll pull a, a fresh molar and hand it on over. Queen Argantle looks at it and just... You have a good amount of calcium. Good intake. Uh -huh. And they, like, just sort of, like, stick it into their hair. And it's just, like, tucked in. Because, like, it's, again, like, a wild mane of hair. So, like, you're guessing that this is also a multi-pocket situation. It never gets normal when one of them's gone. Lowry's just sitting there. <laughs> contemplating mm -hmm. the missing tooth. Mm, dry socket, <laughs> my favorite flavor. <laughs> All right, so you have convinced the Korids uh, to to participate in the pushies of this. And, like, based off of your overall, like, understanding of it, they inform you that there is a uh, one of these things that, uh, one of these long lightning rods that is within... Uh, a mile or two of them and they they'll uh effectively just like give them the time frame like give them a heads up as to as to when things are happening and they they will be there and ensure that the damage is done appreciated for your help in all of this i think our next call is to go talk to mudlump am i right yes have him help us out on this too that's another tower down hey the f not the f oh, fool Okay. Yeah, make a nature check. Okay. This is just to be able to direct your way over back to mud lumps uh, in a timely fashion. Uh, 18. Uh, and then if it, ma if it helps, I have ranger travel powers. Okay, yeah. Ranger travel powers activate. You are able to do that thing. And when also you get... a ranger with no bonus in nature. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, as you get close to Mudlump's abode, uh, Vice, it seems like the notes that you had given to Mudlump as to how to improve, uh, the stew that he was making have been acted upon, and it smells like a very nice, almost curry smell, scent, coming from Mudlump's hut. And uh, upon arriving, Mudlump uh, sort of like waves at uh, your group and he will dish everybody up some dinner. Uh, so you'll be able to inform him as to the plan. And kind of going over this, uh, he is, he seems on board, you know, like he doesn't really care particularly one way or the other. But when you, uh, when you inform him like, hey, if we get rid of the lightning rods, like, they're controlling the weather. The rain won't be as much. Which means that your bees will be able to thrive and grow. And he's like, oh, fuck yeah. Like, let's do it. Let's tear down these got dang lightning rods. 
Uh, and so uh, if you give him 100 feet of rope and give him the time and the place, uh, he will lash it around one of these lightning rods and using his immense cyclopean strength uh, will tear it down. Okay, 100 given to Mudlum. And Polinella and uh, Ar- Amador uh, are both like, will will assist in this as well uh so mudlump uh mudlump using the power of bees and love is going to tear down one of these all right that's two towers and there are six in total or seven sorry Fuck. running out of allies would it be we could locate two of the closer ones a good idea to split up it will weaken our combat effectiveness but at this point if we're going to do this simultaneously that seems to be the only way there is another way what is that delay it and sneak back in to get some masks if we can turn back the people who were turned into masks they could help yeah. too, right? Right. Aye, but do it's you true. think we can do that within an hour during our spell casting? Because if I'm seen, combat will ensue, and I don't want to kill a bunch of innocent people being forced to guard uh, this place. We only had one cupcake. I can only turn one person invisible. What if we talk to Molliver, see if we can't get a valiant call to help us? Ah, the adventuring party. That's a good idea. Rest of them? If the Briganocks are able to dig enough, they wouldn't necessarily need to push the tower over, but if they collapse the foundation. Which causes exactly. it to collapse. That would be another tower. And that would bring us to three. If we can find this heroic party of yours, that would bring us to a four. Make or it more. I I don't know their strength. Maybe they can split up. True. We'll talk to Molliver and convene. I, I need a day for my invisibility to come back anyhow. Right. Let's call in the cavalry. Can we contact anyone outside of this current section, or is each hither thither yon separated from each other by some sort of magic? Like if we sent a sending out to someone in a different place to you, ask for them to come and help. You'd be able to send to ask for help, but they'd still have to navigate the mists. Do we know anyone else besides our companion that was already turned into a marionette uh, have the capacity to escort people through? I'm uh, not sure. What about that oil can? An oil can? Squirt? Ah. <sighs> God. Yeah, that was his name, wasn't it? Uh, who amongst us has sending? None. None? Zippo. Did you happen to leave a tooth with, uh, Will and the getaway gang? Mm -mm. Damn. What about the, uh, bully wugs that have allegiance? Damn. It's only like a ten mile radius or something like that. Like running my brain through my notes of how many different friends we've made. <laughs> All right. There Open is... up my phone contacts list. Just call everyone. <laughs> <laughs> One mass text. Mm-hmm. There is mm-hmm. one option. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure how well it would go over, but it's a thought. Please do share. It's a place where Clout told me to not go near. A brothel? No, I've... That's a conversation for a different day. There are Um, creatures... Refresh my memory. (laughs) There are creatures that have a wolf-like face, deer antlers, and large avian bodies. Peritons. Peritons are sentient. It is possible 
to deal with them. Whoa. I didn't say it was a good plan, but if you're looking to make allies, it is I, I can pin that on the board. That is an idea. I can already imagine how that conversation is going to go. Hey there, Peritons. We need something from you. What do you have on offer to trade? Hmm? Meat, right? They are, they are carnivores. Very specifically, they like elven meat. I would just not be there for the conversation. That's fair. I'd rather them not salivate while trying to strike a bargain. They well, say that judiciary right. figures make the poorest decisions before lunch. They are also the sentient goats, the wise ones that gave us the weird quotes. I don't know if we can ask them for help, but if we're talking about just everything we have, throwing the spaghetti against the wall and see what sticks, that's on the table too. As many as possible. If you did end up splitting the group at all, is, are, are any of you able to be larger? Or you could push it. Yes. Uh, right, there's one. I can f fly and just break some shit on the top of the tower. Yeah, I can be larger. So if we do split, we have two larges and two wings. Which would mean we have the Corrids, the Briganox, Mudlump, two and two so that's five if your group well if our group split up which would just leave the peritons and one more we'll go see what Molova has to say Aye, they did say their companions know about with their current locations, or maybe they have a way to contact their companions. Uh, out of character. Yeah. How large is Mudlump? Mudlump? Uh, huge. Yeah, as a Cyclops is considered huge. That's two sizes bigger than I am, right? Yes. It's three by three square. I got a question. Sure. I got a potion of growth. Yep. And I can also cast in large reduce. Which would make you the same size as Mudlump. Mudlump. Yeah. If you were a rune knight, you could activate your rune to Three go fucking times. <laughs> fucking colossal. Damn. That's a That's lot. That's a build for a different game. <laughs> Mari has a miner's build. pick in her in her pack. There we go. It's <laughs> It'll oh, take a couple have... hours, but we'll get it. <laughs> God. If only Kronk were here. Kronk Gore Blast! Hey, so then let's go talk to Molliver and see if we can get uh, Tower Number 6 taken care of. Hi. Number 7. All right. We if... haven't uh, crossed the Peritin one yet. Mm. Uh, Cloud will pull out his Potion of Growth and say, I'd really like to save this for later if I can, uh, but I don't know. If the Periton thing doesn't work out, we've got a backup plan. Oh, here. Yeah. And Vice will hand uh, Clout a vial. What is this? It's a potion of diminution. So small, Make then. you smaller? One makes you taller and the other small. How much smaller? Like, Small, small. Small, small. But if you cast Reduce from Enlarge Reduce, you can go to Tiny. Balvador. Aye. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I think we just solved our stealth mission problem. <laughs> He's going to put that potion away. <laughs> well, that's I've good. got two more if anyone else wants. <laughs> Where did what are these those? come from? Potions of diminution. They were from. Why do you have three of those? Because they were given to me. You took them all from the same house. 
I it was, was given the a, same cupboard. I was. Oh, I also have a push of invisibility, by the way. Yeah. What? <laughs> I it have was a given to me via stealing. Does that help? <laughs> I was grifting. Sorry, was that Larry? I have a mummified raven's claw. If that helps. Oh, keep that. That makes a good snack. Ew. Most of the nutrients are gone if the flesh is mummified. Mm -hmm. um, it's just jerky this is... at that point. This no. is fake bullshit hours. That might actually be useful. You just gotta find the right fae. Fae into crow's feet. Mm -hmm. As the only fae standing here, I am very uncomfortable with this conversation at this point. Let's I've move on. I've lived here my entire life. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to go talk to Molliver. Okay. So have some dinner with Mudlump. Inform him of the plan. Double on back to the Briganok mine. Yeah. And you can hear from inside that they're like. Like there's no sound of working. As you were assuming that uh, it is past the. Uh, that it is past the 20th lightning strike in the day. Uh, which means that out of the series of 24, it's roughly around like eight o'clock. So the, you worked out with the Korids that, you know, they could get some, some good rest. They could get some shut eye if the Briganox just stopped working during, uh, specific hours. Uh, but you go in, uh, and the Briganox are like, there's like a, a little party of these very small, uh, creatures as Golmo, uh, has been returned and Molliver, uh, when you approach uh, inside of this cave in, in one of their larger rooms is sort of like just sitting on the ground and has a bunch of these fucking things on them uh, as they are uh, like passing like passing out food like they made like a charcuterie board and to a group of creatures that are only the size of mice it's like wow an entire pizza just for me and it's like yeah, yeah yes uh, so the Briganox are, are happily munching away and eating, and, and Molliver uh, will acknowledge your group as you approach. Uh, and just, friends, so good to see you. Again, thank you for helping out with Golmo. I can't believe that you were able to in and out, zip zap a zoop and, and, and grab them and return them. That's so, that's so wonderful. Thank you. We were happy to help. Tiny, tiny pizza. And he mo uh, they motion towards, like, it's a cracker with a slice of meat on top of it and then a single slice of cheese. It's like a Lunchable, basically. It's a Lunchable. What is a charcuterie board if not a Lunchable persevering? Let's be <laughs> real here. It's a very fancy Lunchable. Okay? Yes. It's a Lunchable wrong. you eat with the pinkies out. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Larry will take a tiny pizza. Okay. Uh, and, uh, Molliver, uh, uh, explains that, uh, to you all, just, uh, Golmo has had a terrible time while trapped in Motherhorn. Uh, apparently, uh, Endolin, Creeping Lin, the bitter end, had given this woman... A, a tool that she had, or a, a pipe that she had stolen from one of her sisters that she claimed the smoke would allow them to invent better. I'm not really sure what she meant by that. It had something Mother to do with Haka. the pipe itself, is what Golmo what? was saying. Do you know what it is? It's Pam's hands. I'm sorry, your friend's hands were... A it's his mojo. Pipe. We need to get that pipe. We have to get that pipe. One of Enlin's sisters specialized in taking away things from a person. This was your former them. companion, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. In items. They were a wonderful toy maker. Well, if it if it is important to you and to them, then I think it is important that we make sure to retrieve this. 
We've got a working plan, Molliver. Oh. For which job? The e -job. take down the towers and then storm Motherhorn job. Oh. That's a good job to have to have plans on. Good. We, well, we were actually wondering if you could call your adventurer friends. We need some help. We were also wondering if the Briganox would be amenable to digging around one of the towers to destabilize the foundation. We technically have Clapperclaw, too, if we needed to get everybody involved in this. We'd have to go <laughs> mm -mm. back, though. Clapperclaw's at, uh... And at the end of the way. Was left yeah. at, yeah, back. Sue. So, uh, and Molliver, uh, when you say that, just... I, I mean, they... Probably a little. I don't want to say busy, but I don't. They, I mean, they're at the Palace of Heart's Desire still. So. It'd be hard for them to get here. I think so. I don't know. I haven't really checked in with them in a while. Is <laughs> the Palace of Heart's Desire the castle that we were just at? No, the Palace of Heart's Desire is the core of Prismere that's been. Stuck in stasis for X okay. amount of time, but Molliver speaking doesn't seem to have the awareness that something has happened in the Palace of Heart's Desire. It seems they've been in this cave for a little while. So his party can't probably come home. Well, we know where I can one try and is. contact Ringle Rune. Last couple times I did, they didn't answer. I assume they're sleeping or something. Old man, you know, gets distracted with books and things. I'm sure. Distracted. Vice, you should just tell them. Hmm? You should tell them. Yeah. Molliver, there was something that happened to the Palace of Heart's Desire. It's... Drab, I know. Frozen in stasis. Oh, mm, uh, if your and, party was there, they're probably trapped. Well, that's a pickle, isn't it? You know that would. Exp I thought they were just ghosting me. And I know that we didn't always see eye to eye on a lot of things, but I thought mm. it really weird. That none of them reached out to, like, let me know? Why would you think that they were turning you invisible? No, that's not what ghosting means. That That's when but, you stop contacting someone, even though they're still actively trying to contact you. Like what I did with but, Elkhorn, but yes. But said... Hmm. Sorry. Move on. This happens frequently. Just let me be confused. <laughs> okay, enjoy a tiny pizza. <laughs> and like one no. of the little Briganox like hands it to you and you see like that ripped one is like curling another Briganox like, yeah! <laughs> There's just like a tiny feat of strength happening in a corner. Sticks a little pizza in his mouth. Mm. So as far as uh, getting my party to assist... You all have a better idea as to why that wouldn't work than I do. Right. Okay. Um, huh. Do we have a layout of where the towers are? I can help with that, I, I, I believe. And uh, Molliver will give you a rough map uh, of... Uh, of Yawn, uh, which I can pull up here in a hot second. Just a moment. With the magic of the internet, anything is possible. I was going to write magic yawn because you said magic of the internet, and that I was going <laughs> to do it again. <laughs> Stop. Oh no! It's the D and D. It's the D and D actual sized map. I need to not have that be the case. Is All yawns are magic. Map? They charm you into yawning as well. 
There we Don't go. Don't think about yawning. Don't do Correct, it. I'm trying not to right now. <laughs> as or as did like said, three times during this stream. I felt it. It is. <laughs> oh, there it goes. I'm sorry. I couldn't find a smaller one. I it's think it's okay. about average size. <laughs> God damn it. This is all going off the rails. <laughs> Where is... All right. Someone so, turn off my computer again. You're all wonderful. So looking okay. at the map, all of the stars and moons that are gold and towers are uh, are right there. The Brigannock Mine uh, is the uh, castle-y looking thing to the bottom left. Uh, and where you met the Korids is the little Stonehenge looking guy uh, on the bottom right. Or Wait, other way like, around. Your image mirrored? <laughs> no, I'm just really bad with directions. So the Stonehenge boy on the bottom left is where the Korids are. Briganox are bottom right. Okay. okay. So, that's, so three of them are all within the range of those that team. Um, how many, with the forces we have now, how many total could we take down at once? I think we're at five. Uh, five. Okay, so there are the Briganox team, the Korid team, uh mudlump chungus team big old chungi then we have uh we have uh if the proof of fools split into groups of two then we have the next two taken care of and then uh if you spoke with the peritons and things ended up going well that would bring you to six and then you would just have the last one to figure out Briganot, Corrid, Mudlump, Fools, Fools, Peritons, that is six. Okay, so, which two are the closest together then? Because we can make that be like our final goals. Well, potentially what we could do is we could start with the furthest ones away first. That way, all of the forces go out to the furthest ones. And then once they're gone far enough, we can take down the closest one as well, cutting off the power finally. Okay, so then it sounds like the Briganox and the Corrid should be the ones that strike first, since they are the furthest mm -hmm. away. Mm -hmm. Who would move the fastest? They, they need to uh, take down the closest one, and the one further out from that one. Amongst us or amongst the allies? Yes. Uh, I can... I can move relatively fast in difficult terrain such as these mountains, and I can fly for about ten minutes. But uh, if somebody else can move faster than that... Three of us, all four of us can fly. Wait, no, can you turn into things that fly? No. Sorry. Ah, sorry. I could... Three of us can fly, and you can turn can into something that can be carried while mm -hmm. being flown. Yeah. And Gleam, like, steadily raises their hand. Wait, can you fly? Well, no, I mean, on a trapeze, yes, but that's, an, <laughs> that's a different thing entirely. For one of them if we were able to get Molliver to leave the cave I could go with Molliver Polinella, a swarm of bees and Amador and our group should be able to take down one of them hopefully if uh, uh, Break a Leg is willing to assist as well I don't think they have the muscle strength numbers. Mm -hmm. Molliver, would you be okay with that? And Molliver just like, leave the cave? <laughs> I leave the cave all the time. And like, there's like the, the Key and peel sweat gif of him just like thinking about, or them thinking about leaving the cave. Uh, like, is getting them like... <laughs> But yeah, they... now, Molliver, it'll be a heroic action that the Briganox would tell oh. tales to their children for generations. That's all and just it wouldn't be for long. Look, you'll I... single-handedly hand, single help in getting your friends out of stasis. Oh, I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do the thing. I'm proud oh. of you. We'll sing your ah. praises to your party about how brave and gallant you were. Please Metaphorically, don't. not literally. Uh, please, I'm not a performer. Don't. It's look. Please, I Cloud, stop it. <laughs> was more of a behind the scenes, Clear. scurry around in the dark, geared individual. I don't need songs or praise or any. Yeah, well, that. Well, 
Now it's so is he, but that doesn't stop him. Is he not a bard? Who? You. Are you a bard? Me? I dabble. Don't you, like, sing and dance and do all of that? I think you're mixing minstrels with bards. You know, that's a very common misconception. I do get the two confused rather hard. He's a musical hobbyist, not music by profession. I mean, if the Symphony of Death is a musical piece, sure. That's really know. fucking dark. And, like, when Molliver says <laughs> fucking, like, all of the Briganox just... <gasps> there is just the and largest eye roll from Lowry. Can you not be <laughs> an for just one night? The... Me. The tone of this party shifts, and all of the Briganox start chanting, In the jar, in the jar, in the jar. And Molliver is just like, hand onto their face as you see that there is like a little procession of Briganox <laughs> carrying in what looks like a large glass jar that has like a couple coins that are put in it. <laughs> And they just chant, yes. in the jar, in the jar, as small of it, clink, and the coin falls, rattles, and they're just, yeah, yeah! it's like, I don't know why they love it so much, Proud of but their nice. enthusiasm the really turns me off of the whole thing, so, I mean, good, good for, for them, them I it. suppose. <laughs> Proud of yourself, Vice, you made them say fuck. And then the Briganox look at you in the jar. I'm not a part of this. Jar. Jar. No. In, in the, the jar. jar. And oh, Oliver, God. like, arms <laughs> crossed, just in the jar. In the jar. And, like, he's like, <laughs> they're their saying rules. it. Yeah, they're saying it, like, not in the cadence That's of the Briganox. Reciprocity. <laughs> Until Vice, like, like where Molliver was the others, but, like, the really strong Briganox is. Mm, <laughs> and goes over and we're like three of the Briganox are holding it. Just the one. Like, yeah, but put, put the coin in! I can hold yeah. it! Yeah! Clout retreats until he's like literally backed into a corner and then he just gets out a coin and drops it in the jar. <laughs> There's cheering hey! from the Briganox again. <laughs> Bless this mess. And well. Gleam just like like, looks around, just that. Okay. All right. Like, she's just, sure, I'm here. This is fine. I'm an acrobat. Well, it all right. sounds like fine. we have all of the cards set up so that we can do a simultaneous strike now, or at least Not a very yet. rapid we still one. have to convince the Peritons. Right. Do they fly between the towers, or do they just guide the one? They so don't... We might even encounter them while we are traveling to the towers. They don't guard the lightning rods. They guard the beacons. Those are different things? Yes. Uh, if you look on the map, the area that you would be, uh, that the beacons are, is that towards the center area next to the moon that's getting struck by lightning, there is one of these large stone structures that has a small fire in it, mm -hmm. and it rings a lake. That is the beacons. Okay, okay. So it is on our way. Also, did anyone else notice that every fucking mountain in this map is a mushroom? Oh, that's fun. There are, like, like, there's a bunch of mushroom-shaped mountains in here. <laughs> oh, they're adorable. Oh, it's the, uh, it's the wind. Mm -hmm. Um, that it, it, they're, they're special, um, how do you call it? Uh, erosion? Rocks. Yeah. They're rocks that, like, sand erode. Oh, striation. Yeah. <laughs> rocks. All right, rocks. So. Yeah. Uh... Yeah, you are able to to be here for uh, the rest of as many tiny pizzas as you want. Is the group deciding that they are going to uh, attempt to speak with these Peritons? Sounds like we're going to have to. Okay. I, don't, uh, I likely don't have the highest charisma in the group, but I am definitely willing to try. Oh. Sorry that yawn got its hooks in me and what didn't time leave. What day is it? I'm trying not to yawn. Uh, oh. Twilight. <laughs> 
Yeah, at this point, uh, because you had uh, taken a rest, passed through the chasm, gone into Motherhorn, adventured around Motherhorn, out of Motherhorn, spoke to the Korids, went to Mudlump, went back to the Brigandox, and are having all of these things happen in the day. Your day is mostly done uh, at this point. Like, it is getting to be later on in the evening, uh, especially knowing that the journey ahead is roughly going to be about five miles uh, toward until you could actually get to that beacon. So you could head there tonight, or you could head there first thing in the morning if you wanted to stay here where it's dry inside the cave. Please? Please leave? Okay, we can go down. No. Yeah, we're in a hurry or something. No, let's stay the night. Okay. Sounds good. So, is there anything anyone wants to do over the evening or any conversations that want to be had again over this evening before we just roll into the next day? Well, that's good. Gonna... Oh, that, yeah, it depends, I guess. Lara's just going to take her book in a blanket and go hunker down by the mouth of the cave. Listen to the rain while she reads. Um, due to the proximity in the cave slash uh, the concept of echo chambers, uh, this time round, uh, people would be able to hear Balhadur going through their uh, eggshell charm bracelet. Uh, calling off a bunch of different uh, what sounds like nicknames to most people. Hmm. Vice is gonna be just staring at his gem, trying to figure out what exactly was oh, yeah. wished for. God damn it, that's what Clout was gonna be doing. <laughs> we we could be like Sit. in bunk bed situations. <laughs> well, wait. I mean, it's like bedroll situations, isn't it? There are beds that have been stone-shaped with a layer of clay on top, so it's more like a memory foam. Mm, lovely. Yeah, no, Clout will be sitting in his bed uh, looking at his gem. Blunderer, devourer, mumbler, discreet, dreamer, folder, staff piecer, nuzzler, Harmonious. Did you say staff abuser? Staff piercer. Okay. <laughs> also, what the fuck? Well, our name's going to be Karen in a few years. We just wanted to start it early. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Get out. <laughs> okay, well, I think that with that, while Lowry, you read, Clout, you focus on your Jemmy. Vice, you focus on your Jemmy, and Balhadur, you go through your ritual of your eggshell bracelet. That is where we will call it for tonight's session. So I'd like to say first and foremost, thank you to everybody who decided to stop on by and join us for this wonderful game of Dungeons and Dragons, because we couldn't do games like this without the wonderful people that are also here in the show. Speaking of those wonderful people, hey, RJ, where can we find you? What do you do? Hey everybody, my name is RJ, and you can catch me at rjs 2 on Twitter and Twitch, where I tweet about the nerdy things in my life and sometimes stream with my friends. If you want to see me in other games and other places, you should go over to my Twitter and just follow along, because I normally uh, retweet whenever I go live. Danaykeeter.com uh, hey everybody, I'm Sarah. I played Miss Lowry Moon tonight, and uh, you can find me all over the internet as the Hype Goblin, most recently on the YouTubes, the Tubes of You, uh, if you want to go check out my most recent video, which is all about uh, calibrating the perfect game for your players for every table that you ever run as a DM. I uh, got a lot of neat tools in there and um, some important information for y'all. So go check that out. Uh, also, you can find me on TikTok and uh, what's that other one called? Instagram. Words are hard when you're neurodivergent. Uh, cosplaying these characters that uh, I play in games and some that I no longer play anymore. Uh, Danakiner.com. Howdy, everybody. I am Media Flare. Uh, I am a voice actor and streamer. You can find me uh, on Twitter or Twitch at Media Flare. Um, 
you can find me twice uh, during the week here at Indoor Adventures, uh, Sundays and Thursdays. And also, if you live in the Detroit or East Michigan area, I will be a performer for the upcoming Theater Bazaar event that is happening. So if you want to see me dressed as a sexy clown, see me on Saturdays. DanaeKeener.com Speaking of DanaeKeener.com, hi everybody, I'm Danae Keener. You can find me at DanaeKeener.com. I do nerdy drawings mostly related to D&D &D and a lot of things on this channel. You can also find me at Danae Keener on Twitter. I've got a pinned tweet there. You can see all of the games that I'm a part of. Uh, so go and check it out, DanaeKeener.com. And if you've made it this far, you probably already know who I am. But if you don't, hey, Acorns, what's up? It's me, your buddy, your pal, your friend, the Indoor Adventurer, the showrunner here at twitch.tv slash Indoor Adventures. We do shows like this on Monday, Thursday, and Sunday, currently at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. If this is your first time joining us, you can go to youtube.com slash Indoor Adventures to check up on all of the VODs of each of the games that we have played up until this point. Or you can go towards where Anywhere audio casts are being made available for free. You can find us there under the same moniker. And speaking of things that are being made made available for free if you go to patreon.com slash indoor adventures you can check up on our after show called nights in the courtyard where we answer questions not only from each other but also from the community so if you have any questions for myself or any of these other fine folk feel free to join us again at patreon.com slash indoor adventures the best way to ask us those questions post them in the twitch chat to the side We'll hopefully see them. If you really want to make sure that we see those questions, join us on our Discord. The link can also be found in the Twitch chat to the side or in the description of this video or audio cast down below. It's super easy. Again, it's free. It's a fun time. I like it, which is actually where we are going to be going right here shortly. So I'd like to say once again, thank you to everybody who decided to stop on by. Thank you to these players for putting up with my bullshit once again this week. And we'll see all of you guys next time. All right, everybody. Bye-bye!